Well, growing up, I had a stable and happy home, but that was uh, suddenly interrupted by infidelity, great anger, and increasing violence. And that lasted about five years before my parents' marriage ended in a very messy divorce. And it was a very difficult and dark time for me. Growing up, my dad, uh, when I was a little boy, my dad was the first Hispanic fireman in Ohio. I was very proud of my daddy. He was my hero. Um, he had some, some bad habits of his own as well. Uh, my mom was always there for us, always took care of us. She was a stay-at-home mom. He ended up uh, killing somebody, and he ended up going to prison when I was about seven years old. I felt a lot of anger and um, great emptiness. And the emptiness felt like it was trying to consume me, like a big black hole, and anything I tried to do good just got sucked into that darkness. And I tried success, friends, relationships, and finally religion, but nothing would make it go away. And at last I decided I needed to end it all. And I began to plan my suicide. I turned a teenager and I just, I hit the streets. I got introduced to the drugs and alcohol. Uh, and it just, you know, once I got introduced to that, my, my whole demeanor just changed. Uh, I ended up in prison before I even turned uh, 18 years old. I was a little boy and, and I was sentenced to a man's penitentiary and uh, I had to fight my way out every day. Uh, I got out when I was about 23. Uh, the alcohols and the drugs was always there. <clears throat> I lost my sister four years ago. Well, it'd be five years this May, but four years and two days to the day of my sister's death, the anniversary. I end up overdosing myself and I, I was dead. I was dead for 12 minutes. And that week a youth group leader took me aside and asked me, um, what's going on? And I just said, I believe in God now, but why is this emptiness so great? And he said, have you ever received Christ? And I said, what's that? And so he shared the four spiritual laws with me, which said that God loved me and had a wonderful plan for my life but my sin separated me from him, and so I couldn't know and experience that love and that plan. But Jesus died for me, and I kind of knew that, but still, that emptiness was there. And then he said, but the fourth law says you must individually receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And I just thought, no way, that's just too easy. I've tried all these things. How could just a prayer make a difference? So I took that little book home and I read it over and over. And I finally said, I've tried everything else I care to try. I'm gonna do it. And I got down on my knees and said, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be, forgive me. And when I finished that prayer, the emptiness was gone. And I felt like a thousand pounds had rolled off my shoulders. Uh, they told me you died. You were dead, man. You're really not supposed to be here. We need to take you to the emergency room and they're gonna run tests on you because of, you know, literally you shouldn't even be talking to us right now. And I was talking as if nothing happened. But I'm here right now by God's grace. I'm here because God has a purpose for me. Just like he has a purpose for every single person in this world. There is, there is a purpose for every individual that God has created. He created us to be something more, something more. We're more than conquerors, and I see that now. He conquered death so that I don't have to die. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here because God, our Christ, already paid that price for me. If that wasn't true, I would have never, ever been peeled up off that floor like I was. I promise you that. I guess my favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And verse 14 says, I will restore your fortunes. And I think I've seen a lot of restoration in my life. He's begin, begun to heal my personality little by little, restoring my family, restoring relationships there. But once I turned to Christ and I said, look, Lord, I give you my life. Do with me what you will, because you're the one, you're the reason why I'm breathing. You literally breathed air back into me. 
It was taken away from me, but you breathed it back into me. Let every part of me, from my toes to my head, let every part of me be for you. Whatever gift you gave me, let me let it be for you. And ever since I've done that, my, my family's come back together. My sister started following me to church. Once I led the way, once I chose to go to church and I walked into them doors and I felt at home, I felt Pastor Tony's God tell me, come to the altar, whatever it is, come here, bring everything that you have in your life that's keeping you away from peace, bring it right here. Once I did that, I felt this relief. I felt, man, these tears just came out of my eyes. I'm a new creation because of Christ. I'm a new creation, I'm somebody new. My attitude, the way I treat people, the way people can view me, the way people can approach me instead of being afraid of me. I think one of the keys has been staying in church and staying in the Word, studying the Word and trying to apply it in my life. And one of the recent ways I've seen restoration is I was experiencing significant memory loss, like not even knowing my street and passing it. I've lived there 26 years. And I came in to church on Saturday morning and decided to pray in the sanctuary. And pastor was there and he said, what's going on? And I told him and I said, but last night was terrifying because I couldn't remember scripture. And he prayed for me and I felt something snap, like turn in my head. And the next two weeks I had no further memory loss and no episodes, I would call them. And then on Wednesday night prayer, he prayed again for me publicly. And that night I just had all these different headaches in different parts of my brain. And I wondered, God, are you completing a healing in me? And the next morning I woke up completely clear headed and my brain scan came back perfectly normal. My sisters are coming, they wanna to go to Bible study. They see a change in me, so they wanna change. I see my sisters, Irene, I see Sabina on Facebook. I see my mother posting scriptures. I see my son saying prayers. He calls me every night and tells me, Dad, I'm gonna pray with me. Dad, God bless you when he hangs up. He doesn't say, he doesn't just hang up on me. He says, Daddy, I love you, God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. That's a blessing from my children to see something in me that they want to grab a hold of it too and want to read the Bible and want to come closer to God. For anybody that's out there that's, um, that, that's struggling with anything, any kind of addiction, doesn't matter what it is, something that's keeping you from being at peace and from feeling whole, something that's hindering you from the blessings that you're entitled to because you're a child of God. You can get on your knees right here, right now and give your life to God and bring it to the cross and just say, look, God, I can't do this. I can't do this on my own. There's no way I've tried. I've tried to do it. I've tried this, I've tried that. You know, I, I would go, I can go, you know, so long without doing this, without doing, but I always go back to it. It's because God, you have to allow God to do this for you. That's the only way it's gonna happen. I've tried it too, years and years and years. And I've, never, I've, always, I've always been a failure. But because of Christ, I'm more than a conqueror, and so can you, you can be one too.